Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about molecular orbital theory. This is an atom of hydrogen, okay? So if someone ever asks you where are electrons present inside an atom, your answer would be quite simple. Electrons in an atom are present in various orbitals, which could be S, P, D, F, depending on the electron that we're talking about. Here we have a hydrogen atom. So in case of hydrogen, we have only one S orbital. So electron is present in the S orbital of the hydrogen atom, okay? But if someday someone asks you, where are electrons present inside a molecule? To answer that question, we have this theory which we are going to study today, which is called the molecular orbital theory. Now, when atoms combine to form molecules, atomic orbitals also combine to form molecular orbitals. In case which you see on the screen right now, we have two atoms of hydrogen and because electrons are present inside the atomic orbitals, they are also called the atomic orbitals or S atomic orbitals of hydrogen, okay? So we can basically say that atomic orbitals of hydrogen atom combine to form molecular orbitals of hydrogen molecule. To be very simple, atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals differ by the fact that atomic orbitals are associated with an atom, whereas molecular orbitals are associated with a molecule. To be more precise, I can say that electrons in an atomic orbital are influenced by only one positive charge, which is the nucleus, and that is why they are called monocentric, whereas in case of molecular orbitals, the electrons are actually influenced by not one, but more than one positive nucleus, depending upon whatever is the molecularity of that particular molecule, and that is why they are called polycentric. So the most important question is, how are orbitals combining, okay? So to understand this question, first let's understand what are orbitals. Orbitals according to quantum mechanics are nothing but wave functions which means they can be considered as waves which means no matter s, p, d or f orbital whichever orbital you're talking about is going to have a certain wave function associated with it. So they will since they are wave functions they will behave like waves and because waves can be added and subtracted they can also be added and subtracted that's why we practice something called linear combination of atomic orbitals in case of linear, we can use mathematical functions like addition and subtraction and that's why we can add and subtract the waves, okay? So, how do we add and how do we subtract waves? So, in case of waves, when the two waves are in the same phase, which means they are crest of one wave is overlapping with the crest of another and trough is overlapping with the trough of another. In that case, we can add the two waves together and what we get is a wave which is having an even higher amplitude, right? Uh, compa compared to the ones which were actually joining and that is called a constructive interference or we call it as psi1 plus psi2 because this is psi1, this is the first wave function, this is second wave function and this we have the resultant wave function. In case we have two different uh, wave functions in which we have the two wave functions are out of phase which means the crest of one is overlapping with the trough of another. In that case we have subtraction in the two wave functions and the resultant wave is going to have a very less amplitude or sometimes even no amplitude and that is called a destructive interference. This is called psi1 minus psi2. So we can actually add and subtract the waves or orbitals from each other and that is what we are going to practice and this is called linear combination of atomic orbitals and that is what we are going to practice in the further slides. So I've said this before, I'll say this again. Whenever we start with any game, the first thing which we'll do is talk about the rules. The rules of molecular orbital theory are only two and they are basically very, very important. The first one says that atomic orbitals of comparable energies and same symmetry can only combine, okay? And the second one says that number of atomic orbitals combining must be equal to number of formed atomic orbitals. So just for an example, if I take the combination of two hydrogen atoms, uh, as I can see, there are two hydrogen atoms. So of course, they are going to have same energies, not even similar, but same energies because both are 1s orbitals, right? So the first rule is well, right? And the second is number of combining atomic orbitals must be equal to number of formed atomic orbitals. And here in this case, I have two atomic orbitals combining. So I should be getting two orbitals uh, or molecular orbitals formed, okay? As I can see, one is having the energy higher than the combining atoms and one is energy having energy lower than the combining atoms, okay? The one which is having a lower energy is called the bonding atomic molecular orbital, okay? And since this is a, there's a sigma bond between two hydrogen atoms, okay? That is why it is called a sigma bonding molecular orbital. 
whereas the one which is having energy higher than the uh, recombining atoms is called anti bonding molecular orbital and it is called also called sigma star we denote the anti bonding molecular orbital with a star along with that okay sigma basically means it's a single sigma bond and nothing else where a hydrogen molecule has a total of two electrons and and since every orbital has a capacity of two these two electrons will go into the bonding molecular orbital and never into the anti bonding molecular orbital because anti bonding is having a higher energy and every system wants to achieve a state of lowest energy so hydrogen molecule will always uh, love and recommend its electron to go into the bonding molecular orbital to reach a state of lower energy and basically stability so when this happens when hydrogen atoms combine we get a hydrogen molecule where the two electrons will go into the sigma bonding molecular orbital so in order to define them we have bonding molecular orbital the molecular orbital which has lower energy in comparison to the combining atomic orbitals are called bonding molecular orbitals or bmos and they are formed by the addition of the two wave functions so here we have psi1 plus psi2 and we know how sigma and pi bonds exist right they're basically nothing but single and double triple bonds and both of them are examples of bonding molecular orbitals we have anti bonding molecular orbitals where the molecular orbital which has the energy higher than the combining atomic orbital okay and they are formed by the subtraction of the two wave functions so here we have psi1 minus psi2 and we denote a little star along with the sigma and pi bond to denote the anti bonding molecular orbital so we have sigma star and pi star we also have something called non bonding molecular orbitals now these are the bonding molecular orbitals which have equal energies as compared to that of your combining atomic orbitals okay and they are called nbmos or non bonding molecular orbitals and this is where the lone pairs go so lone pairs are the electrons which actually do not take part in a uh, chemical combination and if they are not taking any part they should be having energy same as that of before so that is why they will be having energy just exactly same as that of combining atomic orbitals and they are called non bonding molecular orbital so conventionally z axis is always considered to be the internuclear axis and whenever we have a combination of atomic orbitals on the internuclear axis or along the internuclear axis we have a sigma bond which is formed and whenever we have a orbital combination which is not along the internuclear axis which means on either of the x or y axis then we have a pi bond that is formed okay so just like in case of sigma bonds we have sigma and sigma star which is bonding and uh, anti bonding molecular orbitals again in case of pi bonds we have pi and pi star sigma star and pi star are both the examples of anti bonding molecular orbitals and sigma and pi both are examples of bonding molecular orbitals so for any bond to exist the electrons will definitely have to go into the sigma bonding molecular orbital for any pi bond to exist the electrons must definitely go into the pi bonding molecular orbital it's not like electrons never go into the anti bonding they go into the anti bonding but the number of electrons in bonding should always be higher than the ones in the anti bonding okay so electrons being into the bmos stabilizes a molecule and the electrons being in a bmos destabilizes a molecule so to start with a very basic example we have a combination of two 1s atomic orbitals of hydrogen atom to form a hydrogen molecule and we have two molecular orbitals which are formed one is called sigma bonding and the other is sigma star anti bonding uh, it's basically sigma 1s okay because we have 1s electron in case of hydrogen atoms and we have sigma star 1s okay and both the electrons will definitely go into the sigma 1s bonding atomic uh, bonding molecular orbital and this is the case in case of hydrogen molecule but life is not as simple as hydrogen molecule we have other molecules which are not having just two electrons but of course more than two a lot more than two so let's study about filling of electrons in those cases to fill the electrons in any higher diatomic molecule we have an order which is followed and that order is written on the screen in front of you one most important thing which you guys have to remember is that whenever there is combination happening on the internuclear axis which is the z axis then we will be having a sigma bond formed and whenever we have a combination happening happening on the y or x axis we are going to have a pi bond which is formed okay the second most important thing which you have to remember is that whenever we have a bonding molecular orbital formed we will definitely have its anti bonding molecular orbital too so if we have a sigma star if we have a sigma 1s we are going to have a sigma star 1s if we have a sigma 2s we should definitely have a sigma star 2s if we have a pi 2px and pi 2py we should be having pi star 2px and pi star 2py if we have a sigma 2p 
z we should definitely have a sigma star 2p0 okay so whenever whatever number of bonding molecular orbitals are there the same number of anti bonding molecular orbitals should definitely be there too okay if i talk about filling of electrons in other diatomic molecules then we have an order which is followed okay so in case of molecules till nitrogen atom we have this order which is followed and in case of molecules which are having higher electronegativity like that of oxygen and fluorine we have this order which is followed okay so if i specifically talk about the nitrogen molecule we have n2 and total electrons in n2 is 14 because one nitrogen atom is having seven electrons so if i start filling 14 electrons in this order i will be having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 electrons have been fulfilled now i have to remember that electrons are always filled according to the three rules which is hund's rule of power principle and pauli's exclusion principle so which means i have to start from the very very low energy molecular orbital and then go towards higher now while filling the 2p x and 2p y i will fill it like this means the 2 1 will be singly filled first and the pairing will not happen unless all the orbitals on the same energy level have been fulfilled that is your hund's rule okay so i will be filling it like this now i'll be pairing them and i have filled a total of 12 electrons already i have to still fill two more electrons so those electrons will go into the sigma 2p z and this is my molecular orbital electronic diagram of n2 molecule okay so in this case as you can see the last two electrons go into the sigma 2p z and they are in paired form because they are in paired form n2 is not magnetic so if the two electrons which go into the last uh, molecular orbital are unpaired then the resulting molecule is actually paramagnetic in nature and if you want to know what the meaning of paramagnetic is i'm linking a video below and you can watch that and you can understand that so in case of other molecules where we have unpaired electrons into the outermost shell we can have property of paramagnetism okay so if i talk about oxygen molecule here in this case i have to fill a total of 16 electrons in oxygen atom is having a total of 8 electrons right so if i start filling the electrons from the very bottom i will be filling it in the same order just like as i did before okay and this so i have filled a total of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 electrons i have to six still uh, fill six electrons right so 1 2 3 4 and 5 and 6 so the last two electrons present in the sigma uh, into the pi star 2px and pi star 2py are actually unpaired electrons that is why o2 molecule is actually paramagnetic in nature okay so now this is the order of filling of electrons uh, for all the diatomic structures that you have seen and moving on we will understand what is the meaning of bond order and how is it related to bond length and bond dissociation energy If we talk about the stability of bonds electrons being in bonding molecular orbitals makes a molecule much more stable in comparison to when the electrons are present in anti bonding molecular orbitals so while filling we have seen that we do fill electrons in anti bonding we have been filling electrons into the sigma star and pi star right so which basically means that for a molecule to be stable the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals must be higher than the anti bonding molecular orbitals okay so now we need to understand what is bond order number of bonds present between two bonded atoms is the bond order so in case of your carbon single bond carbon the bond order is 1 in case of carbon double bond carbon the bond order is 2 and in case of carbon triple bond carbon the bond order is 3 if we talk about the mathematical formula of bond order it is half multiplied by number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus the number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbital okay so we'll understand how to find the bond so to find out the bond order in case of any molecule we need to first fill the molecular orbital energy diagram in case of nitrogen we have just filled it okay so we'll find out the bond order here bond order is nothing but half multiplied by number of electrons in bonding minus number of electrons in anti bonding right so in case of nitrogen molecule we have half multiplied by number of electrons in bonding is sigma 1s is bonding sigma 2s is also bonding pi 2px and pi 2py and sigma 2pz is also bonding right so we have a total of 10 electrons in bonding minus we have a total of 1 2 3 4 electrons in anti bonding because these are sigma star and pi sigma star again right so we have four electrons in anti bonding we have half multiplied by 6 and the answer is 3 so the bond order of n is 
three, which means it is n triple bond n, which is true. We know that nitrogen bonds are double uh, a triple bond with nitrogen atom, and hence we can find out the bond order for any other molecule. If you talk about oxygen, which we just did here, okay, in case in case of oxygen is going to be half multiplied by one two. Three, four. I'm counting the bonding ones, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. So ten minus one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it is six, right? So that is going to be four divided by two, which is equal to two, which means the bond order of O two is two, which means there are two bonds between two atoms of oxygen. And that whenever the bond order is equal to zero or it is having a negative value, then the molecule that we are talking about does not exist. For example, if I talk about the helium two molecule, we know that the molecule does not exist, right? So if we try to prove it with the help of the energy diagram, the number of electrons in helium two molecule is going to be equal to four. So if I fill the electrons here, one, two, three, four, the bond order comes out to be equal to half multiplied by two minus two, since two electrons are in the bonding and two into the antibonding, we have zero bond order, which means HE two molecule does not exist. Okay. So whenever we have a bond order which is zero or negative, it clearly means that the molecule which you are talking about does not have any existence. So as it is clearly visible that as the bond order increases from one to two to three, the bond become much more stronger, which means the two atoms are going to be much more closer to each other, and the bond is going to be much more stronger. So as the bond order increases, okay, from one to two to three, the bond length is going to decrease because of course the Atoms are coming much more closer to each other, and the bond energy is going to increase because, well, since atoms are coming much more close, the bond order increasing, the bond energy is also going to increase. So I hope we understand the entire concept of molecular orbital theory. It is a very very important theory even today, and we still have discussions over uh, molecular orbital theory even today. So if you have any doubts on this video, please do comment that down below. And for more videos like this, please keep watching. Thank you so much.